Hey guys, um, I am gonna show you how to propagate Persian shield plant today as well as uh, transplant some cutting that I have already rooted um, into the ground. Just wanna show you how simple and easy it is. Look at this beautiful purple plant. I mean, basically you're getting it for the foliage. It doesn't really flower, but isn't it spectacular? Look, I just put one little plant in here and you can see down here, I mean, look at how much it has grown and produced. Look at all the pretty leaves. And the leaves, I mean, look at the statement. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? That color, it just pops out in the garden. Uh, everything is green. I mean, over here, if you look, there's different variety of colors to it. Look at this leaf. This one's older. Looks like the leaf color basically just faded out of it. Um, if I get closer right there, you can see it. Whereas the new one here, you can see this beautiful, like, royal purple color. Isn't that beautiful? I'm just basically going to show you how to simply propagate it. And then from then, you can root it. And then once it's been rooted, you can transplant it as well. So basically the same method that I will do. So... I have this one and it is mainly in the shade. It gets morning sunlight. Um, you can see it loves its position. Morning sunlight, afternoon shade, it's too hot. I have another one that I planted right next to it basically, but it's in the ground. Um, you can see it doesn't like to be in full sun. It gets morning sun as well as afternoon. It gets a little bit of shade, like right at noon time because I have this um, big here, um, big, what is it called? Um, Bradford pear tree so basically at noon it provides shades and then right literally afternoon it, so it gets morning and afternoon sun exposure and you can see it doesn't do as well I planted these um, these two about the same time it's just different parts of your garden so they're more shade loving but they do need a little bit of sun to give it that color because um, what I'm going to show you over here is the ones that I've propagated and you can see without the sunlight it kind of it's not as vibrant same plant I just propagated this one from cutting I'm going to show you these are the ones that I'm going to transplant but I propagated this one look at all that root ball I mean that root ball is pretty massive for just a couple months and I did two of them so I have two of them but I'm gonna show you really quickly and the supplies I have I have potting soil and then probably 60% of pea, uh, not pea, but, um, perlite um, just to help with the um, drainage um, I garden in zone 8a so it's really hot and humid in the summertime so when you propagate because of the humidity it keeps and it retains the moisture a little bit too much, I think. That's why you'll develop root rot and stem rot. Um, so let me get started over here. I think I'm gonna take it from here. Sorry, I'm working one-handed, so the camera is a little bit shaky. Oh, I move this up and down. Okay. Can you see it? So basically, like any other propagation, you just go in, you snip it from a node. A node is basically where uh, another set of leaf comes. So if you look here, a node would be right here. This is where the set of leaves are. That's considered a node. That's where the concentrated hormones are to um, root and you have more success. So I'm gonna come down here, take a cutting, make sure that I leave at least one or two nodes on the plant so it'll still push out new growth. Um, so if you look here, see there's a node here and a node here and I am just gonna, actually that one's almost too small, so I'm gonna take it from here. So here's a cutting here. Here's a node here and then here's a node here. So I'm gonna strip this node here, the leaf, put that in the soil and then have it root. I'll do another one. Here's one right here. I'm going to strip all the leaves right now. They're a little bit distressed from the sun, but they should be okay. 
So I got one, two, three, four cutting. And I would I recommend doing this early morning or late evening, not really at this time. But since I have it, I'm gonna just stick it in this pot of water, let it soak in there for a little bit, get all of its nutrients. And then I will show you the next step once it sits in the water for a little bit. So at this point in time, I think I'm gonna plant the cuttings that I have in this spot right here. So this spot will get morning sun, you can see noon, shade, and then possibly it's going to get late afternoon sun. So it may or may not love its position, it might be a little bit stressed, but I think it's a good spot and it's kind of bare right over here. Um, I kind of use this area as my propagation bed as well. Once I get it a little bit rooted, I stick stuff in here and let it grow. I have a red slipper um, oak leaf hydrangea. I'm not having any success with them and I'm not sure why. I know they like to be in shade, so basically this one's in shade from morning to afternoon and then it gets a little bit of sun, which all plants, they, get, they need a little bit of sun to flower. So those ones will flower. So I just planted it there. It's doing better than the other ones that I have, but it's not as great. I have my biotone starter over here. I put on my gloves so I can dig in the dirt. I think I'm gonna plant it right where this rock is. Sometimes I get really lazy and I propagate rose just by sticking it into the ground. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This one looks like if I left it a little bit more, it may, because I haven't gotten any stem rot yet. But a lot of times sticking it straight into the ground doesn't really work. But hey, I thought I would give it a chance. I do have some in, in my propagation area as well. The soil over here has been amended. I basically dig out this whole bed and then we put top soil in here. So the soil is really good and the plants love it. Um, I garden in zone 8A Georgia, which has your most famous red clay. Look, there's a worm in here. It loves this area as much as all my plants. Yeah, I think I might have chopped off its head. but worms are a good sign. I'm not gonna dig the hole too deeply, mainly a little bit wide and just right where it's at. So here is my propagated Persian leaf, whatever they're called. I'm gonna plant it in here with the soil, put a little bit of biotone in it to help with nutrients and uh, promote root growth. Mix it in there a little bit. I'm gonna basically stick it in its hole. I'm not gonna plant it really too deep, but just enough so that the top where I have it is sticking up from the ground. So the top where I had it um, in the little container sticking up from the ground. And I just tap it down. That's it, you guys. Simple and easy. Um, this is verbena I have over here that I transplanted from a cutting. It's doing pretty good. It's basically done um, flowering. I should probably cut it off right there. And then I have one more. It likes the shady area, so I kind of want to plant it in a shady spot. Here's the other one. You can see the root ball and the root system. So some plants root really easily and I recommend going for plants that root easily the first time around. If you're new, it's more excitement, more enjoyable. Your success rate is higher so you're not so disappointed and then, you know, usually with disappointment you give up really easily. Um, so just go for something that's really simple and easy. 
Um, if you want to, another little thing. So I planted this in here. If you want to produce more growth, like filler wise, you would take the tip of it and kind of pinch it off. If you pinch it off, then it'll send out, out new shoots from the base of where the leaf nodes are, right here and right here. I don't know if you can see it, if it's even close enough that you guys can see where I'm pointing. So let me take it off of its stem, sorry. Okay, so here's where I planted my Persian leaf. Plant, so here's a node here and here's a node here. Node is wherever there's a leaf. So if you pinch it, if you pinch the tip of this, it's gonna stop the growth going upward and then send more growth outward. So then your plant would be more of a filler. It'll be more full. So I am gonna actually go in and pinch it off. Right at the two little nodes right here. Just gonna pinch that. Just take the tip of it off basically. See right there and then it's gonna send a couple of new shoots out I might do an update just to let you know what I mean by that so I've got one there I don't want to plant it any over here because it's almost too much Sun and once everything starts growing around here it's gonna get kind of cluttered um, let me see I did transplant I, I rooted the elephant ear over here. I'm gonna have to transplant those because if they stay that small, that would be great. But when they grow, um, they are massive. I will show you a little bit later what the mother plant looks like. Okay, so back to rooting the Persian. Well, I don't know, should I plant the other one? Let's see. Where am I gonna plant the other one? Do you guys have any idea, any suggestions? I don't really have shady spots in my garden. It's basically either all sun or a little bit of sun. <laughs> There's not really an option for shade. Now what I can do is plant another one over here and I have an oleander right here that I propagated and training it into a tree form. Once it gets big, it's gonna provide shade and it might, you know, work right here. So I can actually plant, um, let me aim this camera down, I'm sorry. Technical issues that you have to do when you're doing it yourself. I might plant one right there. Again, I'm doing it in the daytime but definitely wait till morning or nighttime, which is probably best to transplant. I'm trying to fill it in because what happened is when you don't fill it in, then all the weeds and grass and seeds from everything else, they'll pop in and they will take over. So why not plant things in a compact form so I don't have to worry about all this weed weeding. Okay, so just make a hole just about as wide and as deep. Put a little bit of biotone in there. Mix it around. Pretty simple, you guys. There we go. Drop it in there. Backfill it. Basically put the soil that you put into it back. And then tap it in. Just push it down a little bit, make sure it's firm. And I will more than likely pinch this one off as well. So go into the tip of it. Pinch it off, pinch it off, and then it'll send out new shoots from here and from here. And then lastly, 
I'm gonna water them, give it a little bit of water from the canteen that I have. Give it a little bit of water, let it soak in. I'm gonna water the other one. Just letting the roots and everything get situated. That's done. Now we are gonna do the cuttings. Okay. So basically, pretty simple. Here's all my pot for it. Reach in, grab one. You see it? So where the notes are, which is where the leaf stem is, you just take that off. That's where you're going to stick it into the ground. You have all these other leaves you don't really need, so I want to just pinch them off. You just basically need one, just a little, to do phot photosynthesis. Basically just like that. And I'm going to stick it into the soil. Just want to make sure you can see it. Usually make a little dipper with my finger. Put it in. Make sure that that first node is covered. Give it a gentle little push. That's all. Grab another one. Strip the leaf. Strip the leaves until you just get a little two leaf node right there. So just make sure you stick the node, which is this part right here, into the soil. Another one, same thing. This one's got a weird little angle of a twist. That's weird. So it looks like, here's the stem, but it looks like this note over here didn't really send anything off that way, so it's just one. So now this plant looks all gangly weird. See? <laughs> Well, I'm just going to take off these leaves. I'm going to just stick it in that way and see how it does. Because this one's all funny. Just going to keep one leaf and see how it does. This one, the stem is a little long, so I'm going to cut it. I'm actually going to half the leaf. It's okay to half a leaf, too. You don't have to put a full leaf in there if it's monstrous. Stick that in there. Strip it from the node. And then get rid of some of the leaves. Just keep a little. It just looks like that. Yeah, you have a little side shoot right there. So that's where the nodes are and it's gonna send out a new leaf. But I don't want that there because that's where I want it to root. So I'm gonna take it off. But this one's a little long, so I'm gonna cut it, stick it in. And I think I only did four, so that's it. And then, you just give it a little bit of water, let it soak in. And that is it, you guys. Pretty simple. 
and easy. And then hopefully, um, I just put it in my shady area and let it root up. And then eventually, it's gonna look like this. Isn't it spectacular? Look at that color. It has no flower, but like I said, the interest is in its leaves. Um, I wanted to show you really quickly. So these are the baby elephant ears that I have, right? They're about the size of my hand, a little bit bigger. Some of them are smaller. So the mother plant is this one all the way back here. Sorry, it's so hot and I have to like walk a mile from my front yard to my backyard. There it is, right there. That is the mother plant. Can you see that? Isn't that spectacular? Uh, that's my favorite word for the day, spectacular. Look at those. I mean, it could like shade your whole porch. I'm just kidding. I'm exaggerating, but look at it. Look at my hand right here, and it like barely touches the little tip of it. Can you see how big it is? Look, one little tiny hand. See it? Now, wow, I mean, how does it grow from that to this, right? But I can't leave it there, as you can see, because it's like six feet tall. Just kidding. It's only six feet because it's in this plant container. But basically, I would say it's about four and it could get larger. This one I transplanted, so it basically had to grow from its own little rootstock all over again. But the rootstock is mature, so that's why the leaf is this big. But the leaf is probably like from bottom here all the way to the top. I would say is about 18 inches. See it? But you guys, elephant ears, definitely a spectacular thing. Reminds me of tropical, tropical uh, beach, ocean, you know, any place that is tropical. I just want to show you real quick on that. So even though you may put something somewhere, it may eventually take over that area. So then you're going to have to think about replanting it or transplanting it um, to a different spot where it can accommodate it. That's about it, you guys. For this video I want to say thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one have a great day bye